We're seeing iPads do more and more, and in the future, they're going to only get more and more powerful. So can the iPad ever truly replace all laptops and MacBooks? I've seen this article pop up a few times and it's questioning that Apple thinks iPads can overtake the personal computer. And now from a futurist standpoint, I can kind of understand that. I can get the idea that, you know, these things use touchscreens, they're lighter, there's no fans in them at the moment, and iOS can be more optimized. Apple's putting a lot more money in this direction, you know, it being the same platform as their most popular product ever, the iPhone. So it would make sense, of course, that like in all these advertisements, when we see Apple constantly plugging the iPad as the laptop killer, you don't need a computer computer anymore. This iPad can replace all that. But it's still kind of hypocritical, right? When they're like, the iPad can replace your computer, but they still sell desktops and laptops. So I'd be very curious to ask Apple what they think the functionality of a laptop or iMac is. And like I said, I can understand from a futuristic point of view that iPads are a bit more of a futuristic product. They're a lot newer. And eventually that will be your computing device. You won't have desktops or laptops. But at the same time, I want to look at this from a financial point of view as well. And we can just tell by looking at the lineup, iPads are significantly way, way, way cheaper than any MacBook. And you can get tons of accessories with your iPad Pro and still be under the price of a base model MacBook. So while Apple is telling you to ditch your computer or ditch your laptop to go with an iPad, they'll still take your money if you're interested in that type of product. So is Apple ever going to start phasing out the MacBook lineup because of the extreme success of the iPad Pro lineup? One reason I wanted to start talking about this, and I'm curious to hear your guys' feedback on, it is, it's rumored that in the 2018 iPad, Apple's core department, where they designed the A series chip, and as we're seeing with the A11 Bionic chip, they are capable of some extreme power that you can pack into a smartphone. Rumors are saying that the 2018 iPad is going to have an octa-core processor. Now, an eight-core CPU designed by the Apple team who designed the A11, whether this is the A11X or the A12 chip, it's going to be rather powerful. And with this new hardware that is equipped with the iPad Pro, will Apple actually start shipping pre premium software to go with it because that's primarily the big holdback between buying a MacBook Pro versus buying an iPad Pro is there's certain pro software like for me it's Final Cut Pro or perhaps for you it could be Adobe Premiere or After Effects that prevents you from doing your profession on a tablet the software is a bit more consumer friendly it's a bit more accustomed to the masses it's not really for professional use but it's definitely improving we're seeing lots of pro apps slowly move their way onto the iOS App Store a lot of them being specifically designed for the iPad Pro. Apps like LumaFusion, which I've reviewed on this channel and really, really like the idea that on iOS, we can get editing platforms that are just as customizable as Adobe apps, which is an interesting premise, but definitely is in its potential stages. It is not yet competing. And because Mac OS has all these years of support and because so many people are used to doing their profession on a keyboard and mouse, suddenly switching to an Apple Pencil and a smart keyboard or switching just to a Bluetooth keyboard and a touchscreen is probably going to take some getting used to and it would probably take a few decades to where we could have professionals finally phase that out i mean keep in mind you and me or the people older than me watching this video could very easily just say no we're used to trackpads and we're used to keyboards and mice we don't want to switch to an ipad but people who will be professionals in the future like people who are little kids now or maybe not even born yet they might grow up being extremely accustomed to a touch screen and a tablet display and when they grow up maybe a keyboard and mouse would be like us typing on a typewriter it just wouldn't make sense it's because that's what they grew up with. So of course I'm asking a lot of questions in today's video, but that is genuinely because I am curious. The first thing we have to be asking is, does Apple think iPads can completely replace the MacBook lineup one day if they become so powerful and they become so optimized with pro software, the MacBooks will suddenly become irrelevant? Or does Apple think that's possible, but will they do it? Could Apple keep around the MacBook lineup just because they think these cost a lot more money to make, which means that we can charge for at a higher price and it means our profit margin on our MacBooks can be higher than that of our iPad Pros. Therefore, from a business standpoint, does it even matter if iPads can replace MacBooks? If that would hurt them financially, then maybe it's not even worth it. So my theory on what's going to happen to the iPad slash MacBook lineup for the next decade is that we're definitely going to see the MacBook lineup get more specified because in any industry, when you see products go in decline, the first impulse is to always go towards the pro consumer. I mean, look at Xboxes. They weren't selling too well 
well. So then they started making them more for the pros. They started putting more features in them, even if they were more expensive. Now we have the Xbox One X and it's selling really well. Even though it's a lot more money than the Xboxes before it, it's catered to a different market that wants premium features, wants premium hardware, and therefore is willing to pay top dollar for it because you don't have to sell as many units if your profit margin is higher per product. Similar with Microsoft, some of their base model Surface tablets weren't selling very well, so then they went more premium market. And now we have Surface books that cost more than MacBooks and things like the Surface Studio, which start at three grand, opposed to an iMac, which starts at under two grand. When in doubt, go for the pros. And I think that we're gonna see a huge emphasis on the pro market in the MacBook lineup over the next 10 years, which means that things like the 12 inch MacBook might not become as popular or Apple won't focus on them as much. And slowly the iPads become more powerful, which means they can support more pro software. And that means that over time, year after year, more and more professionals, as well as just people getting older who are accustomed to using iPads, will be able to do their professions, will be able to do that hardcore work on iPads. However, because iPads will be getting faster and faster, they're gonna be getting more features, they're gonna get more and more pro apps, I think the price points of iPads are actually going to rise. The original starting price of an iPad is $500. Now, it's closer to $600, and if you want a larger one, it just becomes more and more and more. So a prediction I have for next year about this 2018 iPad Pro that people seem really, really excited for because it'll have Face ID, same size bezel all the way around, maybe even wireless charging, we don't know, an octa-core processor. While it will be a very premium package, I'm guessing that Apple over the years is slowly going to start increasing the prices of the iPads until the iPad Pros, with all their new capabilities and with all their potential in the future, will start having price points more similar to that of the current MacBook lineup. So Apple has to be very careful about this because if they just started ditching all of their MacBook Pros at once and starting investing all of their R&D, all of their new software into really professional and very advanced iPad Pros, then first of all, they're cutting off on all the laptop lovers who don't want a tablet and they're making a lot of hardware advancements on a market that is not necessarily all professionals yet. Most people using iPads are using them for consumer use. This is something that has to be transitioned very, very slowly over time. So I kind of look at it at the iMac lineup right now. Of course, as more and more people don't need 32 gigs of RAM and more and more people don't need giant monitors, a lot of people can get their work done on laptops these days, like I can. The entire Telosif network is basically being run from a MacBook right now. There's less and less demand for people to buy desktops like iMacs. So what does Apple do? They slowly make them more advanced, they make them more for professionals, and they make exclusives to the desktop lineup, like the iMac Pro. 8 to 10 to 18 core processors, extreme amount of RAM, extreme amount of solid state storage that's PCIe based. They make it for the pros because the laptops were stealing all of the thunder. Lots more people were buying MacBooks compared to the iMac. So as we get into the 2020s and even the 2030s, I think we'll slowly start to see that with laptops. Apple making incredibly and narrow marketed MacBooks that are extremely powerful, but not really necessary for everyone. Most people in the future will be able to get by with an iPad, whether it's video editing or 3D modeling. That platform is going to get more secure and it's gonna have a heavy user base of professionals that is slowly going to grow over time. So those are my predictions. Of course, I could be totally wrong, but like I said, very, very curious to hear what you guys think. Do you think that for the next 100 years, there will always be a space for laptop lovers out there? There will always be there. I definitely think Apple will always have an option if you want a laptop, but the iPads may take up most of the room of where the MacBooks shine today. All those thoughts, let me know in the comments below. This is your Apple Sheep here, and I will see you in the next one.